I, here's my question. Yeah. You have, because you have theater sports, you have maestro, you have the life game. What's your, what's, what are you, what's your favorite work that you've done? Oh, it's the things that stick in the mind are always from the life game. Tell it's more serious. Yeah, what's the life game? I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's the, you wanting more content in the improv. Yeah. So the, eventually the life game comes about. But I started by taking all the content out and just progressing, almost abstract from one thing to just progressing. But then I got fed up with the having nothing. So the life game you take, oh, I wrote the instructions out for the life game ages before I did it. Because it was, all of this stuff used to be frightening. And it's so normal now. Mm -hmm. Well, you, blind date, the, the idea of taking a person from the audience for an hour and a half <laughs> is insane. The, yes, I know. It's the yeah. scariest thing that I've ever That's done right. and that I continue to do. Yeah. It still scares me. But now me. it just feels normal. Yeah, I guess, yeah. It didn't feel normal when you did it. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my idea was, I, I, think I wrote about four or five instructions down. You take one person for the whole evening. A non-performer? Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You take a person. A human. You act out scenes from their life. You're trying to find a way to direct them where you cast light on the scenes rather than being literal. So you're not just reenacting exactly no. what that person said. Well, they just told you, so. Yeah. To just to reenact it is a bit flat. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I, can't, I can't remember what, the, what it was. But anyway, I'd, about five years later, I needed it. And so I tried it. And people were saying, but what about their mental state? And you can't do therapy in public. And I say, we're not doing therapy. We're not analyzing the material. Mm -hmm. We're just asking somebody about their lives <laughs> and acting it out. I have a, but, I have but a you can't of... do that. No. There'll be mental trouble. And, well, if, if we did it to you, would there be mental trouble? Well, no, but maybe a less educated person. <laughs> <laughs> then, yeah. then you understand the game. Mm -hmm. And the whole point of the life game is it's a benevolent ritual where you are honoring the guest. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's what, that's what the basis of it is. If you, even if the life game is not a good one, as long as you honored the guest, you can be forgiven. There's something else going on. Yeah, but if you, if you just try to be clever and you disrespect the guest, it's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. I had someone, I had someone in an audience at Blind Date ask, do you ever pick some asshole and bring him on stage and teach him a lesson? Oh, God. And I said, you, oh, I, said, I would not want to mm. do that. And you wouldn't mm. want to watch it. No. But then maybe this is someone who's been to comedy clubs or seen other improvisation. Well, the normal thing to get improvisers up is not to, on a, to, to get volunteers up. Yeah. The normal thing to get volunteers up is not to honor them. No. And it's often to exploit them and make them look a bit stupid and get laughs off them. Hurts my heart. But you should never, yeah. In improvisation, it's good to get volunteers. I love that phrase, a benevolent ritual, where yeah. you honor the guest. That yeah. sounds really worthwhile. But that's what it is. Yeah, but you could do that forever. Yeah. And not get bored, maybe. Yeah. I have a and favorite... you remember the stuff. Well, I have a couple of favorite life game things that I've seen. Oh. I, um, you were directing, and the question that was asked of the guest was, what's your earliest memory of pain? And the guest said, when I was in third grade, I got bucked off a horse and broke my leg. Mm. So you said, Stop, like, we're going to have a scene. And I think that this speaks to what you're saying of, we don't reenact that, but we shine light on something else. Yeah. So that we, you had also in this course said, we don't want to reenact the life. We want to end up with a collage that informs the, the truth that we've heard. So yeah. the scene that you called for was I'd like to see two horses <laughs> half an hour before the birthday party. And so two improvisers got up <laughs> and they were horses in their stalls with feed bags and one, and there was a lot of silence at the beginning. And one improviser said, 
Uh, we have a gig at three o'clock. And the other horse said, how old are they? And the first horse said, I think they're a bunch of grade threes. And the, um, the other horse said, I fucking hate kids. I'm going to buck mine off. And then you brought the lights down. It was less than a minute. I don't remember anything of that. We, the, the, we like, had to take a five minute pause. There was so much laughing at the possibility that before this poor person got bucked off a horse and broke their leg, that there actually had been a scene between the two horses where they agreed to buck the kid off because they hated doing birthday parties. I don't think that's typical. Of a life But game? I don't remember it. Oh, that sticks with me forever. Mm. But another one was one you and I had talked about recently um, uh, where Graham Davies was being interviewed and he was asked, uh, you have always encouraged us in the life game to ask not trivial questions all the time. Oh, yeah. You, we're taught not to ask personal questions. Yeah. But in the life game, if you didn't, you wouldn't be honoring the guest. Right. But if I got this funny eye, mm -hmm. where are we? Funny eye. Good for a horse. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a funny eye, if, if you've got a leg missing, in life you ignore it. Yeah. You don't talk about it. But in the life game, you should ask, because the audience are thinking that. They're wondering. Yeah. So in this, this particular life game, the question was asked of Graham, what's your earliest memory of death? And he said, my best friend in high school committed suicide. And I know you said this story has always stuck with you from the life game. Yeah, I may have, memory is not dependable, but <laughs> you can probably clarify my memory. Yeah, well. I think this was Graham, he said that. Yes. And was Clem interviewing him? Clem was one of the improvisers in the cast. I think. But Clem might have I been think, interviewing I him. I think Clem was interviewing him. Yeah, and then you asked them both to be in the, in the scene, I think. And then I said, was that Clem's brother? This is Clem Martini, the playwright. Yeah. yeah. Who I remembered had committed suicide. Clem's brother. Yeah. Who was friends with Graham. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he was friends with Graham, but I sort of remembered. Mm. I don't know. I just, I just felt that I don't think I knew if I didn't know Graham was particularly a friend of Clem, mm. but I said it. I was a shot in the dark, and you said, yes. And then you said, it's something almost unbelievable. I think I must have said, how did you find out or something? He said, well, they announced it over the school public address system. <laughs> My best friend had killed himself. Is that possible in Canada? Can, can they be that insensitive? I, mean, I, I don't know, the, that would probably be in the late 70s, early 80s, early 80s maybe. They you mean didn't know any better. They're more civilized now. I guess. Because oh. they, so they announced over the PA <laughs> yes, that this student had committed suicide. So then I said, well. But then they, all, then they, rele they ended school for the day. They oh, said, well, did. you'll be all very upset, so oh. you can go home now. And they canceled the rest of the I day. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, it, it, yeah, so there's some reason why they said it. But it's, why didn't they, why did they say it? Why didn't they wait? I, I, I think probably the teachers were upset. I don't yeah. know. So that was the story yeah, that came yeah. out in the interview. And then you asked for a very particular scene that yeah, was I said, always let's play done. the scene where you went down to the river. And he said, how did you know I went to the river? And I said, where else would you go? But I'm getting upset. Me too. Well, well, it was a true story, yeah. and it was one of the most. But then I, there was nothing. I, I said, "Well, that's the, he was upset really because his friend had not told him about the suicide beforehand." Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I set them up a scene where the the dead person is allowed back for two minutes. So you go down to the river and sit on the bench and then the dead person arrives. That's right. The that's ghost right. of your friend. The ghost of your friend. And I think it was played by... It, you asked Clem to play his brother. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. I did? Yeah. Oh well, okay. And then this is early days, guys. Um, 
Yeah, Clem, whatever, I don't remember Clem, I remember somebody else doing it. But anyway, memory cannot be trusted. <laughs> um, he said, I come back for a couple, he, there was nothing. He said, I come back for a couple of minutes. That's all I've got. And I know that you're upset, but if I told you, you would have tried to stop me doing it. And it's impossible to go on living. It's too awful. These drugs I'm taking for my schizophrenia, they're making me shake all over. I went to McDonald's and they threw me out. They thought I was some sort of weirdo. And look, I'm trying to pat the dog and I'm hitting it when I'm trying to pat it. Yeah, that was it. We had to take a second intermission. Well, well, that's, that's, I mean, that's an amazing moment in the theater. Well, it has a lot of power, the live game. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And that was amazing. I, I have not forgotten it. No. And then he said, I have to be going. Yeah. And then we stopped the show because that was so emotional. And, and they went into Le Vom and hugged each other for a while. And mm -hmm. yeah, I remember that. But I also remember <laughs> that when we came back from the intermission, now I don't remember what the scene was, but whatever it was, was ridiculously funny. Yeah, because they got a discharge or that emotion, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. But that, the, that, that, that um, I think a lot of improvisation doesn't have that variety. There's the assumption that it's comedy, 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 comedy. Oh, well, they see this thing on TV, on TV. Yeah. Whose line is it anyway? <clears throat> People say that's based on what I did in the 60s, but it's not the same. Uh, I don't know about the Americans. The British used to shoot for four hours with wonderful improvisers. Mm -hmm. I know some of those guys. Uh, I saw Jonathan Price on there once, who is pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, and they show 16 minutes. And no stories are developed. And there's because probably no there's failure, only, though. It's only 16 minutes, yeah. Yeah. And they don't want, it's show business, so there's no failure. Uh -huh. And people watch it, and they, they're trying to reattain that. But they don't understand it. It's a, it's a cream of four, four hours and 16 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Also, when I did it, I'm responsible for making it work. Because I'm on, yeah. I'm on the stage, and I'm stopping scenes and starting them, and putting stuff in and responsible for end, finding endings for them. And whereas but the thing I see on TV is someone sits there and says, I'd like to see something or other, mm -hmm. and then laughs a lot, uh -huh. but never interferes. So she just a front, she's, well, yeah. And I did see it, I saw, like I was in, I was in Toronto for so long ago and I channel surfed, and there was somebody, it was a guy, saying, I'd like to see a, hear a song about bad breath. Oh. And then I kept on channel yeah, surfing. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to hear that. And I don't want to hear that, but he does because <laughs> he thinks it to be disgusting is funny. Yeah. What an idea. 